A few years ago, a fire came in and literally took out this entire area. And that was, I think like five years ago now. And as you could see behind me and all around, the forest is still pretty burnt to the crisp, which is quite sad. And unfortunately it has led to the closure of many different roads, including the one that I was headed to today. But that's all right, cause this spot will do. come at no surprise that here in the Pacific Northwest, there is a huge abundance of fresh ingredients to be harvested, caught, um, fished for, hunted, you name it. And one of those abundant resources is Dungeness crabs. Now, ever since I moved here to Oregon, I wanted to utilize the abundant crab population and try my luck at some crabbing. And up until now, I haven't actually ever given it a shot, but that changed because the other day I went crabbing for the first time. I'm happy to report that I did not come back empty handed. And today, today we're cooking up some local fresh caught Dungeness crab and I'm really excited. There she is. Well, actually there he is, I should say, because you're only legally allowed to keep male Dungeness crabs. All of the females, you have to automatically just let go back into the ocean. Before we get into the actual cooking segment, I did get some footage of the crabbing experience. Now, it's not the most extensive footage since it was my first time out crabbing. I didn't want to lug around all of my ha heavy camera gear. So instead, I just put a GoPro on, which I think did a good enough job at documenting the experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and play that footage now and then we'll get back here and do some cooking. spot guys feeling good about it right here so what I've got here is a crab cage and I just got this I picked it up at a fishing store the other day and the way it works is you basically tie up your bait on the inside of the cage um, in my case I'm gonna be using these chicken drumsticks skin on bone in so you just zip tie a bunch of the chicken to the inside of the cage. Also got this bait box that I'm gonna fill up with chicken as well. And then I throw this cage out into the water um, and then the crabs will come into these doors trying to get the bait inside and they obviously can't get out once they go in. So never done this before, but I have high hopes we're gonna get some. Oh, so I also have, this is lead line. Each of these is one pound. So I have this on there to help the cage sink to the bottom and just stay on the floor of the ocean. So I just got this big pack of chicken. Value, 10 bucks for this entire thing. 
Not bad. Good, how you doing? Good. None today yet, huh? I just got out here. Did you? Yeah, oh, so right. we'll see. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Get out of here. All right, guys, filled with bait, filled with chicken. Now all we gotta do is toss it out, go drink a beer and hope for the best. So this line that I'm using, this rope, this is a lead core rope. Um, and then what that does is it gives it some weight so it helps the line sink, not get all tangled. And I just have a carabiner attached on the end of the line with a Palomar knot. It seems like there's all kinds of different ways to rig these things up, but this is the way that I'm doing. Wish me luck. All right, I'm hoping that I have some beginner's luck. It would be really nice to come home with a couple of crabs and honestly, the video is depending on it. So wish me luck, guys. Fingers are crossed. There is a brewery at the end of this dock. So I'm actually gonna go get a beer and all of these homies are wishing me good luck too. <laughs> um, oh my God, they're gonna try to steal my chicken. Get out of here. They're gonna try to steal my chicken, I bet. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go chill in the brewery, get a beer, hang out, relax, come back and see if we got any crabs. <laughs> now, of course, it would be much more ideal if I had a few different pots. I'd be much more likely to hit my limit, which I probably, knock on wood, I'm probably not gonna hit my limit today. It's pretty late in the day already. That thing's pretty sick. Short bed too, nice. All right, so it's been about 40 minutes or so. I'm gonna go check on the crab pot to see if we got any keepers. Echo? I don't mind. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Like I put him on a leash. Hello. <laughs> yeah. I've had a Bigfoot before too, yeah. but I had a much smaller Bigfoot. It was on the back of my Tundra. Oh, so the 611? Yeah, yeah, yeah I had a 611. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it Dude, was rad. Are crazy, they're worth like 12, 16 grand. Yeah, I know, they're like stupid pricey. Wild. Oh, let's see it here. Yeah. Come on. Come on now, full pop. Oh, it feels heavy. I like that. I mean, that could just be placebo. Oh, no, we got it, we got it. You're not crabbing, you got any pots out or? I just got one out. Nice, nice. Yeah, I only got the one too. Oh, oh there's something in there. Oh, okay. It's not as big. There was definitely an illusion. Yeah, when they come up, it's yeah I thought it was a monster. It. Hey, that's pretty good though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if that's a male, it might be. I love that though. Yeah, you like come up and like it's a freaking giant. <laughs> and it's like, oh. Ah. It's definitely keep the range there. That's yeah, the for sure. If it's a male, we'll see. Oh yeah, it's a male. Nice. Nice. Oh yeah. All right. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, yeah that looks like a that's a keeper. Player. He's trying to pinch me.
Huh. Cool. Well, at least you got one. Makes the trip <laughs> makes the trip worth it. It's a pretty good sized crab. Hopefully we get another one or two on the second toss. So apparently you don't actually want to put them directly onto the ice because they could freeze and die. So instead, just get a towel like that and just put them on the towel. I'm gonna go ahead and keep him in there so he cools off and mellows out a bit. Thanks, bud. So I guess that guy that I was just talking to actually owns this Bigfoot. When I first pulled that pot up, I thought that the crab was massive. It looked like for a split second, like it took up most of the cage. I was like, oh my gosh. But I guess it was just an illusion of it coming out of the water. So that's one. Hopefully on this next toss, we could get at least one more, but I'm really hoping for multiple more since we drove all the way out here. Whatever we get, at least got one, so I'm not coming back empty-handed, which is always a nice thing. Got a bunch of dudes in there. Bunch of little guys. Oh shit, the door came open. Guy looks a little bit small. Oh, just too small. Your lucky day, dude. Ugh. A bunch of small guys in there. Definitely no keepers. So, not the most fruitful crabbing experience. I only came back with one keeper. And at first I was thinking it was kind of a fail and that I must have did something wrong, which I'm sure there were things that I did wrong and there's things that I can improve upon. But I did talk to a couple people at the end who had been there two hours longer than I had, and they had like four or five pots in the water at the same time, and they only got about five keepers. So all in all, I think that it was just a slow day. I had a lot of crabs in the pot. It's just that most of them were too small to bring home, but that's okay. It was a learning experience nonetheless, and now I'll know exactly what to expect going into it. And hopefully next time I'll be able to get more than one crab, but at least I got the one. So without further ado, let's just get to cooking this guy. In case you're wondering about this sweet jacket, this is the flannel lined waxed trucker jacket made by Flint and Tinder. In my opinion, this is the perfect jacket to be wearing at this time of year. Not only does it look really good, it's really comfortable with the flannel, it's warm. I got it on huckberry.com. There will be a link in the description box down below in case you're interested. So this is a cookbook that I found a little while back when I was in some random bookstore. It's a Pacific Northwest cookbook. And it was made in the early 90s, so it just has that fun retro aesthetic to it. And all of the recipes within this cookbook are made with ingredients that can be found and harvested here in the Pacific Northwest. So just like I was talking about earlier in the video, it's really abundant with natural resources, the Pacific Northwest. And so I saw this book and I thought, wow, this is a great way to inspire myself to start trying to get out there and utilize all of those natural resources and, and ingredients that are so abundantly found here. So the recipe that I'm gonna be making today is actually right here in this book. It's a hot crab melt with two cheeses. I'm gonna be doing that in a sandwich roll and it's gonna be delicious. So this is the crab that I caught. As you can see, I already cooked him. I boiled him in water last night in preparation. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually de-shell the crab, take out all of the meat, and it's gonna get messy, so I'm gonna take this off right now. So what I'm gonna be using to get all of the meat out of the crab shell 
is this little picker that I made with the end of a shish kebab skewer. And I'm also gonna use this Leatherman tool as just a little hammer to help crack the shell. This table is pretty unstable. It's a little bit wobbly, so hopefully that's not gonna be too much of an issue. So here he is. So next I'm taking away all the, the gills that are here on the sides. No, I messed that one up. <laughs> it's still a good chunk. The little top piece didn't want to come out. That is actually a really good amount of meat from one crab. Wow, that's, that's quite a bit. That's solid. I was expecting less, honestly. Now, of course, I got to try a piece by itself. I can't just put it all into the crab melt. So, bottoms up. Mmm, you know, they say that Dungeness crab has a sweetness to it, and I totally get that. That is, that's delicious. I can't wait to eat this crab melt. All right, for this next part, I'm just gonna be inside the camper to make my life easier. We're gonna be preparing the filling for the crab melt. It's really simple. There's not many ingredients at all. And this is actually the first dish that I'm gonna make out of that cookbook, so I'm pretty excited. First things first, doing some fine minced bell pepper, red bell pepper, obviously. That looks like that's two tablespoons to me. Next, I've got some chives here. All right, two tablespoons of chives. So the recipe doesn't actually call for garlic, but I feel like it would be a sin to not put garlic in this. We want a nice, finely minced garlic, since it's just going in a sauce. So next, a little bit of Dijon mustard. Also gonna be adding in some sharp cheddar cheese. Some sour cream, or no, I'm sorry, cream cheese. And I chose to use this chive and onion cream cheese just to add a little bit extra oomph. pepper and salt of course and last but not least we're gonna add this delicious Dungeness crab meat oh my gosh that looks so freaking good now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take my beautiful roll here. I'm just gonna fill it with this delicious crab. I don't even know what this is called. <laughs> this de I can't speak. I'm gonna fill it with this delicious crab filling. Crab cheese filling. Oh my goodness gracious. Finish it off with a little bit of cheese. You know what, I think I should actually Kind of try to spread it a little bit more evenly. That way, neither sides of the bread are going to get um, unevenly cooked. Probably hit with that with a little bit more cheese. Plenty of cheese. This is not a health meal, guys. Not a health meal, that's for sure. It's a delicious meal. That's what it is. The last step, you guys guessed it. We're going to broil this. We're going to broil this sucker. Get that preheated up a little bit. Okay, I think it's time. Ooh, I am excited. This is gonna be so good. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Woo. Oh, that smells so good.
My goodness, I am really, really excited to dig into this. This looks so, so good. Now, the only thing that I messed up with is I forgot to restock on beer. So sparkling water it is today. That's all right. Oh, oh that is, that is perfection. Cheers. And thank you to you who sacrificed your life. Wow. Mm. That is phenomenal. It's a messy sandwich, but it is definitely as good as it looks. It is so good. Honestly, this is like 10 times better than the lobster roll I had in Maine. It was okay. The lobster roll was okay. And obviously a much more lobster... Uh, a lobster forward dish, whereas this, the crab meat, is kind of, kind of di not disguised, but it is complementing a lot of other ingredients, whereas a lobster roll is just like straight lobster. But this is ridiculous. That was a lot of food. All right, folks, and that is all I've got for you this week. I hope that you enjoyed that Dungeness Crab catch and cook. I know that I personally really enjoyed getting out there, learning a new skill, catching crabs, and I'll definitely continue to try to get better in the future. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys, like always, for watching. You guys go out there, go on some adventures of your own, live life, beat the status quo. Y'all know the drill. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you in the next one. Peace.